Essentially, you create your presentation, you create your activity in PowerPoint, and then a click of two buttons, it will turn it into the presentation for you. And that presentation can be in a variety of formats. It can be a standalone EXE file, it can be a flash animation, it can be a HTML5 file. So this is why I kind of like this tool. I was looking at, in health science and medicine, we do a lot of case-based learning, a lot of PBL. And I was looking at a tool that I could use to create a standalone case that students could click and move through without any interaction with the academic. And then this could be used as perhaps a split classroom or used as a revision tool. So I haven't actually applied this yet to my teaching. I'm still developing the first tool, but I plan to do it in January of next year. But what I thought I would do is just give you a quick run through as to, as to what it does. The reason I chose this platform is because when I looked at all the other approaches, there was always a technology gap. And that was around Flash, for example, that you can't really use it. It's not well supported on iPads and it's not well supported on, on iPhones. You've then got the Mac version, which is the iBook kind of orphan thing that you can't use on laptops, on PCs. It has to be an iOS. This allows you to do all of those in HTML5. All I've done is created this in PowerPoint, and I'll show you the PowerPoint presentation right at the end. But created it in, um, in PowerPoint, and then just used the iSpring tool to export it. So this is exported as HTML5. You can password protect it. So you can release it to the students at a particular time. It's all integrated with iLearn. There's a quiz option in it, which I'll show you at the end, which again is integrated with iLearn. That can can go through the island site. <laughs> We've got some inspiring learning music there to come up with. <clears throat> and what I've set up is I want this to be used to study six particular cases. So this could be a standalone unit and the students work through, through each of the cases. So we click on the case menu. Please select one of the following cases. So there's six cases there. I'll just and in that iSpring software, you can do all the things that you can do in Camtasia. You can add a video, you can add voiceover. I hate the sound of my own voice, like most of us do when it's recorded. So what I've done is I've used a text-to-speech software called the Bona. So that's the voice that you're hearing there. So basically you just cut and paste in your, um, your text, and it turns it into a Siri-like uh, voice. And it's actually pretty good. So I, I can move through it so you might Hopefully you agree with me that it's it's not a bad alternative to, to speaking yourself and takes just about as much time as doing it yourself. So we'll look at the first case because that's the only case that works at the moment. Erin is 39 years old and is 12 weeks pregnant with her first child. Erin undergoes first trimester screening to assess the health of her unborn baby. So this is a clinical case. This is a case that we want students to work through and understand about Down syndrome, for example. So it will take them through that case. So instead, I've, I've set it up with the text um, being spoken by the Savona software that you then just paste in as an as a MP3. And then during case-based learning and PBR learning, there's often key terms that students have to go and find out, and that's part of the learning experience. I've built them into here as hyperlinks. So you can click on anything that's hyperlinked. It will take you to a separate page. You can read those hyperlinks. You can have additional resources that you can then move to, like a supporting website. I'll go back to that. Close that window. Erin is 39 years old and is 12 weeks pregnant with her first child. 
Erin undergoes first trimester screening to assess the health of her. First trimester screening yeah, combines results from an internal right. blood test with an ultrasound evaluation. Again, the mother's age is also taken into like account. These tests. The following test results are collected, which of the following best describes Erin's risk of having a baby with Down syndrome. So, with all the case based learning that we've done today, a lot of it is just linear, but you're just moving through the case from one trigger to the next, to the next, to the next. What I wanted to do was create branch scenarios where the students get to choose an outcome, and then they can follow that outcome. So, did everyone ever read those Choose Your Own Adventure books as, as a kid when you pick up a book and you read and, you know, do you take a path that goes to the left? If you do, go to page 9. Do you take a path that goes to the right? Then go to page 15. I wanted to create a similar type of scenario here with the learning tool. So, as you go through the scenario, you'll pick up some of the key things, what these results mean, for example. And if you've done the learning, then you should be able to um, assess that this is a positive uh, risk for Down syndrome. So you can Correct. Positive and it However, moves you through a the higher case. risk does not mean that the fetus has a chromosome abnormality. I know you just keep clicking. The result through. of the screening test merely suggests more more that further testing would be a sent. More learning. And again, there's images that you can go through. You can also embed video into the file. And then you can also embed YouTube clips. So if you're worried about copyright on these, you can present it as a YouTube clip. And it's embedded into the, into the tool. That's what I liked about it, is it doesn't take you to multiple different websites if you don't want that. So you can play the YouTube clip. And it will take you through the... Video just as as you see, and again, just keep clicking through and said there's you know, there's terms for the students that put through. So another branch point, we've decided that this child might have Down syndrome, and we want to perform a particular type of testing. And again, this is always a frustration with the students that we've written a case around one particular type of testing yet they wanted to go another route. This allows them to choose which form of testing they want to do. And so we want to use this in, in health science and medicine for students to be able to um, predict the treatment for a patient, and there might be four possible treatments, and you can create scenarios around which of the four ways that they, that they proceed with it. So there's two common ways of testing for Down syndrome. Both are equally valid. This one here is the chromosome karyotyping. We see that there's three chromosome 21s, which is um, indicative of, of Down syndrome. You can click yes. Correct. Chromosome analysis shows the presence of. After receiving the news, Erin and her partner Michael discuss their options. After much deliberation, they make the decision to continue with the pregnancy. Seven months later, Erin gives birth to a baby girl who they call Madison. So that's kind of the, the scenario. What I'm trying to create here is something that a student could move through in about 10, 15 minutes. And it could be used as a flipped classroom, as I said, or you could use it as a, um, as a revision tool. Now, the, the last thing that I wanted to, to be able to do is list, for example, the learning um, outcomes, what the student should have learned as they've gone through the case. And then we can assess this and take a quiz. And this is what I liked about the, I, um, about the ice cream software, is it will embed a multiple choice quiz or um, you know, other formats of quiz within the software. So it's all within one tool. So which of the following chromosomes results in Down syndrome? Chromosome 21. And you can just skip through. You can do hotspots on particular images. You can do matching. Matching up randomly. And you do 
matching with images as well. So there's standalone apps now available for the iPad and standalone apps available for the Android. So once they've got this technology in place, students should be able to take these presentations that are uploaded into iLearn and then download it straight to their iPad and then they can work offline with this type of approach. So I always kind of envisaged the student sitting on a train, traveling into uni and just having a quick flip through one of these on their iPad. But I'm a big fan of tablets and those types of things. So I envisage this as being like a little bit of a game. And these are starting to develop in the in the medical scenario. There's there's a lot of things out there like prognosis that allow you to do these types of things, to set up these little um, these little kind of clinical vignettes for the students to, to work through on their own type of thing. So it's a little bit different than what you know, the previous two presenters have done, which is kind of an interactive in classroom type of thing. This is something I wanted students to be able to go away and do some of that self-directed learning around. All right, thanks guys.